I'm going to show you today how to remove the threads that go from one part of a design to another after you've removed part of that design. I have part of a font open here as an example, and I have it enlarged quite substantially here to 900% so I can see what I'm doing. The first thing I'm going to do is go to my view menu and I'm going to turn off the grid lines. The reason I'm doing this is so that I can see better what I'm doing. Just a hint for you, when you go to turn on your grid lines again, make sure you get grid lines, not snap to grid. A lot of people confuse these two and snap to grid causes all kinds of problems when you're trying to move designs in your hoop. So make sure when you go back in to turn on your grid lines again that you're selecting grid lines. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to click our cutting toolbar, which is this icon right here, and you'll get another little toolbar here. And most people, when they delete part of a design, they use the eraser tool. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. I've clicked the eraser tool, and I'm just going to remove a portion of this design so I can show you how this works. And we're just going to clean that all up. Okay. I'm going to turn off the tool by clicking it again. And when I do, you'll see that we have threads that go from one side of the design to the other across the gap that I just created. All of the little squares that you see here are the stitch points. The stitch points are every area where the needle goes through the fabric. What we're going to do is we're going to unjoin, so to speak, this side of the design from this side of the design. We're going to end up creating extra color stops here. Now what happens when you have the extra color stops is the color stop signal the embroidery machine to stop, tie off, and cut the thread, which then when you press start again, it will move to the next stitch in the line to be stitched and it will start over, thereby eliminating that thread that jumps that gap. The first thing we'll do here is we're just going to clean this up because we have some extra stitches that aren't really necessary. So we're going to go ahead and click split and stitch up here, and that gives us some other options. We're going to be using this delete button to delete some of these extra stitches really quickly here. I'm just going to click on one and I'm going to use the arrow keys on my keyboard just to find out where those go. Okay, so it goes 130, 131, 132, 133. So I think these two that are really close to the edge are not necessary. So we're going to go ahead and delete those. So 131 is highlighted. I'm going to click delete and you'll see that changes the trajectory of that thread. Now it's going right over here. I'm going to now go to this one, and the reason that says 131 is because I deleted that other stitch, and the program actually renumbers all of your stitches as you delete or add. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight that one, and I'm going to delete. And now we have our design going from over here right, right straight across, which is pretty much what we want. I'm going to come over here, and here's another one very close to the edge. And that one goes from this direction, 816, 817, 818. Well, 818 is really not that necessary, so we're going to go ahead and delete that one. It's highlighted, so I'm going to come up here and click Delete. That makes it go straight from here to here. I'm going to click the stitch on the other side of the gap and then follow it. So it goes 8. 818, 819. Well, I don't think 818 is really necessary because we can have it go directly to 19. So we're going to go back to 18. And you can use your arrow keys or click on it if you're able to click on it. Sometimes there's stitches on top of others. That makes that a little difficult. And then I'm going to delete 818. So now we have it going straight directly across here. I'm also going to just move some of these other stitches back a little bit away from the edge just so that when it stitches out, it's clean. I'm clicking on the stitch, and after I clicked it, I'm going to press and hold 
the control key on my keyboard and then I'm going to click it again while I drag it with, the, I'm going to click it with the left mouse button and then drag it and then release the mouse button and release the control key. So click, control key, click with the left mouse button, drag, release the mouse, release the control. There is a video on how to do that as well. So I'm not going to go into that in depth. So now that we've got this simplified, we need to eliminate this thread going across the gap because we don't want that to be there. So I'm going to again go in and click one of the stitches on one of the sides here and I need to figure out which one stitches first and then go right before it goes across the gap. That's the one you want to have highlighted. So 130 and then 131. 130 will stitch and that's where we want it to stop. So I'm going to leave 130 highlighted and I'm going to click the split button up here. When I do that, you'll notice over here on the side, I now have two color stops. You'll also notice that this thread is still here. Do not worry about that. For whatever reason, it still displays that, but it won't actually stitch it. Then I'm going to come over to the other one and click one of them and 818 goes before 819. So this one is going this way across the gap. So 818 stitches first. So we want to highlight that and then click split. Now we have three color stops. What I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to close my cutting toolbar completely. And I'm going to run this through the stitch simulator for you so you can see how this stitches. I'm going to stitch them one color stop at a time. This illustrates to you what the machine's going to do. So this one, I click play, and it's off the, off the edge of the screen at the moment. It comes up to here and it stops. At this point, your machine will stop and it will wait for you. It's going to stop, cut it, or tie it off, and then cut it, and it will wait for you. Then you're going to press the start button on your machine and it will go to the next color stop and we'll stitch that one on the simulator. I'm going to hit play and it starts here and it goes all the way off the screen and it's going to come back with the satin. This is the underlay that you're seeing here. And once it gets over here with the satin, it'll stop. And there it is and it stopped. So at this point, the machine has now stopped, tied it and cut it and it's waiting for you to press start again. Remember, when it's cut it off, there's no thread going across here. So we'll go ahead and go to color stop three. You've just pressed the start button and your machine moves to the other side of the gap and starts stitching again. The only other thing that I want to suggest here is that you may want to put in some lock stitches and that's done on the cutting toolbar as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and click op open the cutting toolbar and I'm going to click split it stitch again. And once I've highlighted one of these stitches here, it will become active. And probably for the underlay, it's not so necessary to have black stitches. So right at the end of the satin stitch, you'll want to add a lock stitch so that it doesn't come unraveled. So we've got the last, last of the satin here, 818, and we'll add a lock stitch. You just highlight that stitch and you click add lock and it adds those extra stitches in there to lock it in place so it doesn't unravel on you. I hope this kind of demystifies removing these stitches and removing the extra threads that go across and actually doing a kind of a manual cutting of a design, if you will. Um, a lot of people do end up get, getting confused when they use the eraser tool and they still end up with those threads going across there and then they try to use the eraser tool again to erase the lines, but there's, there's no stitch points there that you're erasing. You actually have to create these extra color stops in order for the thread to stop there and then 
move over after it's been cut off. You certainly can clean up the stitches in between there and just cut the jumps if you'd like. That's totally up to you. And hopefully this will give you some insight on how to do that. Thank you for watching and have a great day.